We now return to Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute, the radio show discussing the honest truth about Illinois policy and politics. Here's AM 560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with Lauren Cohn. You know Lauren Cohn from <laughs> reading the news standing up back in the day at Fox News never, in Chicago. Never, never going to let you let that down, yeah. live that down. Yeah, it was so innovative. It was. And now you do radio standing up, Dan. I've noticed that. That's it. Well, I thought it was so innovative. I thought I'd bring it to radio. <laughs> Uh, and also now a host on In the Loop. So tell us about the In the Loop program. WYCC PBS Chicago. We are Thursday nights at 7, and it's a news public affairs show, and we cover topics uh, that are local in Chicago and at the state level. Actually, right now I'm working on an economy special, which you will like because we're talking about what's going on in terms of uh, uh, Illinois jobs and the economy and the number of people moving and leaving. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's very interesting and very timely because a Gallup survey finds 42% of Illinoisans would like to leave the state. Now, maybe there's a little bit of self-selection going on, but at least it's apples to apples with the rest of the, 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 the rest of the country. Uh, 42% want to leave the state. That's the third highest number behind only Connecticut and New Jersey. And Illinois Policy Institute and others have been pointing to this for some time. This is not a recent phenomenon. People have been fleeing the state like it's on fire for the better part of the last 15 years, and our economy is suffering as a result. Uh, for more on this and maybe a little bit of the comparison contrast, why are people leaving Illinois, as if you don't know, and uh, what are other states doing that they're actually moving to? We're now joined by Scott Moody. He is the CEO of Federalism and Action, and he's been studying migration issues. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So uh, when you look at uh, the worst three states in terms of the residents feel trapped and they're looking for a way out, uh, Illinois, Connecticut, New Jersey, what, what are some of the commonalities between those three states? Well, the biggest commonality is the lack of jobs that are being created. And as we know, jobs are the primary reason why people pick up and move, looking obviously for greener pastures. And so Illinois' out-migration is a telltale sign to policymakers that, hey, you're not doing a good enough job, uh, you know, managing the economy. In fact, you know, the out-migration now stands at 105,000 people having left Illinois. That's grown from just 40, from 49,000 people just six years ago. So not only is, is the level of out-migration high, it's getting worse. And what areas, Scott, are we talking about? The manufacturing, um, what else in addition to that? Well, I certainly understand manufacturing has, uh, since the Great Recession, plummeted in its employment numbers and has not recovered. And so that's certainly a big part of the story, especially when you consider that the two states that Illinois residents are, are fleeing to are Texas and Florida. So you have two states, no income tax, better weather, and much better job prospects. So whether it's in manufacturing or information technology, it's just a better business climate all, all the way around. Now, it's not just weather, too. I know that this is one of the arguments that the uh, the left tries to make or the apologists for this uh, economic catastrophe that's going on in Illinois try to argue, you know, people are leaving just because they want warmer weather as they get older and stuff. Uh, Steve Moore from the Heritage Foundation makes the point, well, really? Well, then you're going to have to explain to me why people are leaving San Diego to go to Houston. Uh, it's not it's not just weather. It's actually quality of life and the cost of that quality of life, isn't it? Absolutely. It's the whole package. I mean, when you're, you know, you can't just move to Texas because of the weather. You've got to have a job, you know, in, in a lot of cases. And, you know, just look at the differences, though, in growth, to, to put an exclamation point on what you just said. The last two years, and this is predominantly due to out-migration in Illinois, Illinois has lost 30,000 residents total. Total population has shrank. But in Florida, total population grew by over 670,000 people. And in Texas, it almost grew by over uh, by almost a million people. So clearly, what's going on isn't just due to the weather. It's because of a vibrant, booming economy that's attracting uh, people from all walks of life. So what policy changes do you see uh, that could make a difference here? Well, number one, over this time, over the last six years that I talked about where out migration has exploded, we've seen massive tax hikes enacted. We've seen one budget crisis after another caused by the public pension, um, you know, not paying the public pension bill, for example, you know, all of this weighs 
heavily on taxpayers' mind. Are taxes going to go up even more? So that's certainly one area I think you could assuage taxpayers' minds is by saying, look, you know, we're, we're going to do our best to roll back these tax increases. The other major one, because Indiana and Michigan just did it, and now West Virginia is to enact right to work. That would be the best way to bring manufacturing back to Illinois and bring those jobs back. Now, uh, with respect to who's leaving, uh, Lauren mentioned the manufacturing in particular and, 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 and employers, but then just kind of rank and file families that are leaving to go to other states. It, do we have any sense of the demographics, particularly the socioeconomic demographics? Because I think some people, again, the Chicago Democrats in charge of our state legislature are want to say, oh, well, this is, you know, multi-millionaires who are looking for tax havens in other states and so they're really here but they establish residency somewhere else for the tax benefit and it seems to me that that doesn't explain the kind of numbers you're talking about that it's really middle-income families that are just like "I i can't be here anymore i can't make it make financial sense particularly if i can go just over the border into indiana or wisconsin and reduce my cost of living by a third well, that's exactly right. I mean, multimillionaires have numerous options, one of which is just simply moving out of state. But, you know, they can afford the accountants to move assets out of state. You know, they're actually the ones who can probably stay in Illinois the longest. Right. The people who can't are the people whose jobs have disappeared and aren't coming back. And those people are your families that, or, the, or people who are graduating from college and looking for their first job. And because of the lackluster job performance, that clearly tells us when you look at surveys, jobs are the number one reason why people move. So that suggests a much younger demographic here are the ones driving these massive migration numbers. So knowing that, you know, when a family moves, you know, this, these are just the now numbers. But when a family moves, they're taking their children and future children with them. And so when you compound that number through the years and decades, Illinois is losing out on hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of residents with of residents with every resident that moves out of the state permanently with no intention of coming back. We're talking to Scott Moody. He's the CEO of Federalism in Action, talking about out-migration from Illinois and a couple other states uh, that are even worse, Connecticut and New Jersey, although we're providing stiff competition. Uh, I, I wonder if... Um, any of the states that are the bad examples, Illinois, Connecticut, New Jersey, let's start with them, uh, recognizing the penalty they pay for this level of outmigration and trying to change the policy course. Obviously, we have a Republican governor here that's trying to change the policy course, but he's got super majorities of Democrats in the General Assembly that don't want to change course. I wonder if uh, Christie in New Jersey is doing any better with his Democrats or, or what's happening in Connecticut, because it seems to me, and this is a little bit counterintuitive, that the worse that those in power make it, the better it gets for them because who's leaving? It's not those that are going to support the Democrat power structure in a place like Chicago. Um, They're they're not the ones leaving because they're the people that are too wealthy, so they're insulated from bad public policy, or they're the beneficiary of transfer payments. So the irony is the more they push productive people to other states, the actually the better it gets for them politically because those center-right type voters are diminished. Well, it does certainly become a vicious cycle when those states in particular that you, you've listed have not just seen out migration for one or two years. We're talking now going into the decades. So all of those people have left. You know, in, in Illinois, for example, just to give you the economic impact, you know, when a dollar leaves, when, when a family leaves and a dollar leaves, it doesn't come back, and it actually multiplies through the years. I mean, it just leaves this big hole in the economy. The cumulative net impact is about $26 billion that of all the people who've left over the last uh, 20 years have created this hole in the economy. So, you know, this is all tied together. You know, the lackluster job performance today is in part tied to the out-migration that's been going on a year ago, a decade ago, or more. And so that, I think, is, is, to your point, getting to the then political dynamics, well, at some point it becomes a much harder task to reverse. Well, you brought up earlier taxes and rolling back taxes, and, you know, we've done that, and I think it's inevitable that we're going to see that change and go back to, you know, raising the taxes again. And I see this trend that they're economically, our leaders, uh, Democratic leaders, are counting on retail and not manufacturing. And so if we're going to bank on retail to change our economy, that just seems like a, a, a losing strategy. Would you agree? 
Well, certainly if you look at the difference in pay scales between rate, retail, and manufacturing, that does not seem like a, a great solution. I mean, the middle class um, that we all talk, the American middle class that we all talk about was fundamentally built on blue-collar, well-paying manufacturing jobs. And when those disappear, as they have in Illinois, and with, with no prospect of them coming back, to rebuild that on the backs of retail seems like wishful thinking. All right. He is Scott Moody, the CEO of Federalism in Action. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you.